Welcome back to GMK. Folks, if you've followed my chasing career for any real period of time, you've probably noticed a connecting thread with just about every chase I've done, and that is the attire that I tend to wear when I go out and do storm chasing. For me, it's a little bit of a good luck charm, and it's something that started over 16 years ago on a chase that basically was not supposed to be a chase because I was supposed to be educating myself at a conference in Iowa here, but it gave birth to a long-standing tradition that stands to this day. Take a look. Storm chasing requires a mix of good forecasting, solid navigation, and a little bit of a lot of luck. I got a tornado. I'm not even kidding. Yes, education and skill will do most of the work for you, but no one will turn down a little bit of good luck. And for many, adding that little extra bit of luck comes with some superstition. And while I never considered myself a truly superstitious person outside of chasing, I apparently grew into one when it comes to chasing water vapor across the skies. While I carry with me a variety of critters to bring about some of that luck, my most notable and certainly most visually obvious is the wearing of the number 81. And it has been part of my required gear since very early on in my career. But where did that come from and how did it become my signature look? Well, it all started back in 2004 at a conference in Iowa. It was my first major meteorology conference, and knowing the Weather Channel along with some other TV networks were going to be there, I thought it would be fun to see me on TV, and I'd easily stand out if I wore one of my football jerseys. But as it turns out, there was chasing to be had that weekend. Now here's day two. I think some of you are interested in that. Um, we don't want you to leave here too early. Tomorrow. Here we are in the, uh, the parking lot of the NBC Suites. We're leaving the conference a day early to go shoot down to Oklahoma. To be fair, we didn't leave tomorrow. We left later that night, starting an all-night drive from Des Moines to get into position for this late March setup. We have made it to the Super 8 Motel at 4.15 in the morning. Given all I brought were jerseys, that ended up being my attire for the day. And it did seem to work quite well as we saw several tornadoes west and northwest of Oklahoma City, including a front row seat to these twin funnels near the town of Ocarche, northwest of the state capitol. A couple months later in May, I wore that jersey on two other chases I made after a string of busted chase days. Those two days, May 12th and May 29th, and needless to say, number 81 was cemented. Tornado on the ground. The number 81 was worn by my childhood idol and favorite football player, Art Monk, a wide receiver for the Washington football team formerly known as the Redskins. I had the honor of meeting Monk when he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame back in 2008, and I told him I wear his jersey around chasing tornadoes. He looked at me like I was crazy, and honestly, who could blame him? But to be fair, it was before my international exposure on the Discovery Channel, but at least I had the opportunity to tell him. The original jersey sits at the Twistex Memorial in El Reno, Oklahoma, honoring my friends and fellow chasers Tim, Paul, and Carl, who lost their lives in the El Reno tornado back in 2013. And while the jersey has transitioned to more comfortable shirts through the years, the number 81 remains a constant in my chasing attire, even to this day. Oh, Tony, I love that. <laughs> what a sweet story. I think it's it's pretty neat to see that. And I know many people have asked, like, why does he wear this again? So Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a question I, I wanted to address. And it, it, it's a fun story, I think, too. Yeah. Because back in the younger years, and, and <laughs> that is some younger years back then, you know, there, there was a lot of, like, this was really cool. You were that wide-eyed thing. And, of course, you know, you go to these conferences, these TV stations, I thought, you know, I'll stand out in a crowd so I can be like, hey, there I am on TV. <laughs> and now, now I do weather. Now it's and, hey, deal. there you are on TV. <clears throat> but did it, was it really hard to go and find um, all this footage, like all the stuff that you had to gather here? Because there's some of that footage there. So, I mean, I'm not saying you're old or anything, but I'm like, how do you? <laughs> well, <laughs> We can't find stuff from like two weeks ago here in the Cake Newsroom sometimes. So, I mean, how are you digging through all this? Yeah, the, 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 the footage that came from this was 16 years old. And yeah. I want to show you some pictures that I took because I had some help from this. Blake Naftel, this is his tape collection from this day. So we're using Digital 8 tapes, mini DV tapes. Doug Kiesling helped me out as well. He dug up a box that was just absolutely huge. This is my collection of these tapes here. And of course, in the one of those suitcases, you see the di uh, Digital 8 camera mm. that I had to use to transfer a lot of this footage. Now, most of the storm footage existed 
easily. We had most of that on copies. It was finding these conference tapes, and that's what I had to kind of recruit some of my friends with. This is Doug's collection here. You see the box of tapes that he was going through to bring some of this footage of these conferences to life for me. And between the three of us, I think we all spent about 24 hours collecting digital imagery. They both actually cameoed in this piece mm. as well. So I snuck them in and they look like baby faces as well. So huge shout out to my buddies, Blake and Doug. I've been working with them for 16, 17, 18 years now. Um, so it's, it's great to have those connections, especially when you're digging back into the archives to look for those younger, more lean years, I would say. Well, I mean, and you talk about it, I mean, spending all that time, it does take that long, because what happens is when you have a tape, it's just like playing it out at home. If you wanna go and get tape over to convert it to digital, you have to play it out and have it play out in real time. And you're probably going through all these things, just trying to find well, that one clip, that and it, one and thing. And it's funny though, because then you're forced to watch it again. Yeah. And there was a piece in there where I did this whole spiel on the equipment that I had brought with me to this conference, all oh. my cameras and was talking <laughs> about. I had a notebook that had routes uh -huh. with libraries along the way, because Wi-Fi wasn't a thing yet. You know, sure. you couldn't get internet in your cars. So to get data, we used to stop at libraries in our target range, and I made this notebook of routes from Denver to Amarillo or Denver to Wichita and all the libraries in route so I could stop and get data on my way to a target. Oh my goodness, that's quite an effort. I love it though. You've researched it. Now everybody has Wi-Fi on their phones or something, oh yeah, now, you know, a restaurant you can drop at. So Maybe someday here in the Storm Saga, we'll talk about what it was like chasing in the early years versus what it's like chasing now. I'll see if I can dig up some of the hard copies. All right, we look forward to it. We'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs>